Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. We're going to look at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1. Proverbs 11, verse 1. The title of the message is, Are you living a balanced life? Are you living a balanced life? The Bible says, A false balance is abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is His delight. Brother Nathan, can you pray for the message? Amen. Are you living a balanced life? As Brother Nathan mentioned in his prayer, living a balanced Christian life is not the easiest thing. Now, sometimes you get tilted one way or the other. What is something that people waste most in their life? We all know it's time. You know, we waste our time the most. Along with that, you know, American people are very used to wasting a lot of things, right? Waste food. Uh, probably our country is number one in wasting food, right? Uh, okay, I can't finish this food. Goes to the trash, right? Uh, I'm, nah, I don't like this food. Goes to the trash. That's one thing that as a, just a human being, right, not just Christian or anything else, you should always be grateful for food. Whoever provides food, whoever cooks food for you, you should be thankful. Right? What if the food doesn't taste good, right? What if, you know, it's the worst tasting food you ever had? But if someone made it for you, you know, because they loved you, you should just eat it gratefully. At the end of the day, food provides, you know, means to go on, right? It, it just gives you energy. I know a lot of people live for food, right? You get most pleasure out of eating good food. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if that becomes a priority in your life, you're living an unbalanced life. First thing that you think about after you get up work is, you know, what's going to be on the dinner table, right? A lot of people think that. You know, maybe you're hungry. First thing you think when you wake up, you know, what's going to be breakfast, right? When lunchtime comes near, you think about, oh, what am I going to eat for today? So people, you know, they, they think about certain things more than the others, one of the things that Christians tend to forget is that you and I, we have to live a balanced life. If you don't live a balanced life, it's abomination to the Lord. And I remember a lot of people, including myself, when you first get saved, you get really gung-ho about it. Like you really want to serve the Lord. You know, you receive the gift of salvation. How easy was, right? And you want others to have it as well. And for some, you know, I had that wrong mentality too. You know what? My goal in life is I'm just going to live for the Lord. Okay, that's good. However, I'm going to forget about everything in my life, you know. Forget about school, forget about work, forget about family, forget about everything. You know, I'm just going to become a missionary, and then serve the Lord. Wrong way of thinking. Right? That's not a balanced life. Right? Lord will not lose, use a person who's not balanced. If, you're, if you don't have a good testimony at work, if you don't have good testimony at school, you don't have good testimony at home, you don't have good testimony all the places, right? You can't be used because you're going to bring shame to the name of the Lord. So when you look at your Christian life right now, do you think you're living a balanced Christian life? 
Do you spend enough time in the Word of God? Do you spend enough time in prayer? Do you spend enough time in ministry? Do you spend enough time witnessing to others? And do you also spend enough time doing your best at school, doing your best at work? It's not about just doing one thing more than the other. You have to be doing your best for everything. Let's turn your Bible to Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. I mean, this is like our conclusion. I mean, this is conclusion of the message. And this is the most important part of the message. What is it? Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. As you reflect on your Christian life today, think about what kind of Christian have I been? Have I lived a balanced Christian life? Did I spend or did I waste time more than that? Not. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. Again, Bible says what? And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. You can't be just doing your best when people are watching. A lot of times, people only do what they're supposed to do because they're being watched or they're being supervised. For example, at work, you know, most of the adults in this congregation works. And when you work, are you the type of person who works harder, who seems to work harder when your supervisor or your manager is watching you? Right? You might have been like lollygagging, you know, you know, just doing your own thing, surfing the internet you know, on your desk or in your office, wherever you are. And then suddenly you hear the footsteps, right? Somehow it's funny how you, know, you have that instinct you know, when someone's watching you, right? And then you have that, you know, little instinct where, oh man, it's, it's my boss watching me. And then you suddenly close all your windows, you know, all the sites that you weren't supposed to be in, and then you start typing very fast. Uh, and then screen's not even moving. You're just typing, right? So that someone behind you or someone close by could hear as if, you know, oh yeah, this guy's working, right? I'm pretty sure some of you have done that before. If you've never done it, hey, good for you, right? You're the type of person that should be hired in any company, right? Or for that matter, right? You, know, you have your cell phone nowadays. You know, you're, you're at work or even at school. You know, when I was going to school, we didn't have, you know, cell phones or you know, touch screen cell phones like that. But nowadays, kids have it. So I think, you know, you're not supposed to use it during class time. But people break rules all the time, right? Especially if you're sitting all the way in the back, you know, people can really see you, and there's like, you know, 40 students in front of you. Who knows what you're doing, right? You might take your phone out, you know, playing games, right? Or chatting, you know, or checking your social media. Right? When, but you, you have that sense. A teacher's gonna about to stand up and walk around or ask me a question, and you take it away. But when it's time to, you know, do your phone again, I guess you start doing it again. Even at work, you know, a lot of people just take their phone out and do it. I mean, maybe you have nothing to do at work. You know, maybe it's management's problem, right? They're not giving you things for you to do. However, if you do have things to do, and if you want to be a good example, if you want to live a balanced Christian life, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you have to do it as if you're doing it, you know, to the Lord. Simple as that. Then your whole attitude will change. Your lifestyle will change. The way you treat each other will change. Many times, no, you don't treat each other that well, right? 
especially people, you know, who you look down upon. You're like, oh man, as a Bible believer, that never happens. I mean, it happens all the time. It even happens more than, say, you know, other, you know, unsaved congregations out there. Why? Because you have that puffed up knowledge. You know, you start, you know, gathering knowledge. You know, I know about dispensation. I know about this doctrine, that doctrine. And when somebody comes along your way and they don't know what you know, and you start looking down on them, oh, man, how do they not know? Forgetting where you were before you knew the truth, before you found out the truth. Then what happens? The balance gets off, right? Instead of trying to help others, instead of trying to lead people to the truth, your focus has become me, I'm better than them, and you start looking down on them. That's why you cannot be trying to you know, learn the Word of God, increase your knowledge in the Word of God, so that you could look down on people or prove others wrong. You know, that shouldn't be you know, your purpose. I'm sure there has been an occasion, especially if you're out there witnessing to people, you know, you've been stomped, right? And maybe it could have been, you know, all their cults out there. And you're like, man, I'm going to study and study and study. I'm going to prove them wrong, right? I'm going to get them, right? And then you're Goal is not to witness to them so that they could get saved. Your goal is to tell them and preach to them and, you know, shout at them, yell at them so that you want to put them in their place of, I'm smarter than you and you don't, you're not smarter than me. That's where balance gets off. That's where a lot of, especially young Christians who start learning the Word of God, start gaining this, you know, wonderful knowledge as a Bible believer, and you start getting puffed up. Instead of having a right balance of being humble and having the desire to still learn the Word of God, you have more. This where you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm smart. You know, I know, I know, like, mysteries of the Bible, right? You know, I know tribulation. Now, I know millennial. I know all this stuff now, right? Tribulation, saints, revelation, you know, like Genesis, all that stuff. And you tend to become really, really proud. You know, people who make problems at church are unbalanced people. And especially those unbalanced people who become proud of knowledge of the Word of God. That's why you and I have to be careful. Now, sometimes people who doesn't know anything, they'll just stay put because they don't know anything, right? And that's not a good thing either. That's not a good balance either. You're like, you know what? I don't want to cause any trouble at the church, so I'm not going to learn anything, you know? I'm just going to stay quiet, sit in the back, sit in the front, wherever you're sitting, and I'm just going to stay quiet. You know what? In a way, that is a blessing, right? You're not going to really cause any trouble per se, However, you're not growing at all. You just come to church, you sit, you listen to a message, let it come to one ear, let it go out the other ear, and then you repeat that process again. And then when we look at you, or if the Lord were to look at you spiritually, you're still a little baby, right? We have little kids laughing in the back, right? You know, they're, they're laughing because... They think they're not baby anymore, you know. Now, my little sister is a baby, you know. Like in Noah's case, Noah has a little sister. I'm pretty sure to his eyes, you know, Yevini is like a little baby, right? I mean, she is a baby, right? But he himself is not that far from being a baby, right? Sean as well, you know, Solara as well. And... They're supposed to have more like, you know, innocent mind, right? When they look at you, spiritually speaking, they might see a little baby. And they might just start laughing. Oh, man. 
They're supposed to be like five, ten years older than me. But they're actually younger than me. Physically speaking, they're taller than me. They're bigger than me. Man, but spiritually speaking, I'm older than them. You know, they better call me big brother and big sister. Can you imagine, you know, when our young ones, like, grow up, they're, like, in their elementary, like, graduating, you know, like, Isaac's age, like, in middle school, and we're all grown-ups, and then standing next to them, you know, they're eating the Word of God, you know, they're listening, they're praying, you know, their lives are being changed, they have love for the lost souls out there, continuously learning the Word of God with humble heart. And they stand next to you, you know, you're like, they're like here, and all those that you are, who's been saved for like 15 years, 10 years, 20 years, you know, older than their physical age, you're like down here. It's like you've never grown. When you have an unbalanced Christian walk, when you have an unbalanced, you know, nutrition, what happens? Nutrients, what happens? You don't grow. So many of Christians... And many of Bible believers, many of saved people, including you and me, there's been times, or even right now, you just haven't grown. You're just where you've been, or you're getting worse. And as you grow older, some people shrink, right? Their height actually decreases. Probably like young ones are like, oh, how does that happen? You know, it happens when you age, right? You know, I mean, you used to be like, you know, six feet, and now you're like 5'10", you know. You used to be like 5'5", five five and now you're like 5'3". It happens because of aging, right? Or because of some accidents or, you know, physical activity out there. However, as Christians, you should be growing continuously. There shouldn't be stop. Right? Can you tell me honestly, that you know everything in this book, right? Can you tell me honestly that you don't have to go out there and witness anymore? Can you tell me honestly that you don't have to get on your knees and pray anymore? Can you tell me honestly that, man, I don't need to think about lore as much as I used to in the past, right? For some of you guys, like the Bible said, you left the first love. You used to have a okay to good balance, right? You never missed the ministry of church because it was important to you. And you also did your best at work. However, what happens is that because you lost that Colossians 5, 23, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, you stop doing it for the Lord. So you start doing it for yourself. Whenever balance is, you know, say out of balance or out of focus, what happens? Because you're not looking at the right things. It's not at the right weight. So what happened? Instead of, you know, lore being the middle, controlling everything in your life, now you start controlling everything in your life. Then what happens? Balance can never be on the right, I guess, weight. So what happens? You start doing everything for yourself. It's okay. You're not thinking in terms of what the Lord would want you to do. You start thinking in terms of what I want to do. Right? Okay. Church, Sunday. Me, no church. Me, tired. Me, lazy. Right? There are legitimate reasons why you won't be here, right? Because of physical ailments or whatnot. But I'm talking about, you know, just normal, right? Normal you, where you have an able body, you know, you have able transportation to come to church or go to any ministries, right? You're like, okay, today I'm just lazy. I'm just not going to do it. Man, that's a false balance. If you don't do it because you're lazy, that's a sin. A lot of times, you do not have good balance. Why? Because you're lazy. Simple as that. 
You and I, we waste so much time of the Lord when Bible says redeeming the time, Ephesians 5, 16 and Colossians 4, 5. We just constantly waste time and get our balance out of balance. Let's turn our Bibles to Proverbs 27. And a lot of times you have false sense of this. That's why you become so lazy. Proverbs 27, verse 1. The Bible says, Proverbs 27, verse 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You have like this false sense of security that I could do it tomorrow. Do you really know what's going to happen tomorrow? You don't. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. You just don't know what's going to happen. Then, why do you tend to put things off? Why do you procrastinate? Why do you become so lazy, right? If you have to consistently read the Word of God, if you have to consistently pray, and you have to consistently participate in the ministry and fellowship of the saints, why do you always tell yourself, you know what, I could do this next week. I could do this tomorrow. Man, if you live a life like that, you're completely off balance. And not only that, you're constantly committing sin against the Lord, wasting His time. You know, does it hit you? I mean, does it hit your heart? Like, man, I'm wasting God's time. You're bought with a price. Lord bought you with His precious blood. You're His servant, right? And as a servant, it's not your own time. It's the master's time. You're out of balance because you're taking it easy. You think it's okay to waste God's time. People who live balanced life really, really think of God's time precious. Every second, every hour of the day is precious to them. When you see missionaries out there, Every second is precious. They want to lead one more soul to the Lord. They want to pass out one more track. They want to do this and this more for the Lord because they have a desperation, because they have that, you know, desperation of serving the Lord. When did you ever have that kind of desperation when you're serving the Lord, right? Instead, you... You are on your you know, lazy chair. You're on your sofa just watching that TV, what, playing with your phone, playing with your laptop, whatever you do to you know, be like, oh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm just relaxing. Right? When the Bible says redeeming the time, you're trying to buy the time. Right? Instead, you're wasting time. When you waste God's time, what do you think is going to happen to you? You think you got to get closer to God? Of course not. You get further and further away from the Lord. That's why not living a balanced Christian life is so, how should I say, it's a pitfall of so many Christians. You could say, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Good. But that's it? I mean, you're like, are you going to just waste the rest of your life? You're not. That's why you're sitting on your pews today. Because you want to do something for the Lord. Because you want more out of your life than needless or useless you know, time that you spend on yourself. Because you want to spend time for the Lord. When you value that time, and when you think that, okay, every moment is God's time, and I want to do it as if I'm doing it for the Lord, then your work life, your family life, and your spiritual life, everything changes. You become a real hard worker. You study hard. 
Only thing that God asks of you is, right? What Lord asks of you is doing your best. Especially, we have kids right here. You know, some of them are pressured about schooling. Just do your best. If you don't get A pluses all the time, it's okay. If you do your best and you get an F, something's wrong with you. There's no way you're gonna get you're gonna fail anything if you do your best, right? You will at least I believe that pass, right? If you do your best, and that's all you want, right? You want to get your degree, you know, for college kids. But if you do your best, you know, more times than not, you're gonna get good grades, B's and A's, right? At work, you know, for some. Work is like a joke. Work is just like a game. Or work is like, you know, I just, you know, punch in my time for eight hours and then I'm done. I have my money and then I support my family. However, some people see your work life, they're like, man, he doesn't do anything. She doesn't do anything, right? Or like, that department doesn't do anything, you know? I mean, my boss doesn't do anything, so I'm not going to do anything either, right? Sometimes you get, you get that sense too, right? Okay? Yeah. And no one cares about nobody. You know, CEOs making their millions, well, who cares, you know? I'm just going to do minimal, you know, just to pass by. That is not a good Christian. As a Christian, wherever you are, you want to do your best, especially at work. Because that, you might be the only Bible they will ever see. You might not talk to them about the Word of God, but they'll see you. And you should be different. Obviously, you shouldn't be cussing at work. You know, God forbid, I mean, if any, any person in this room like cusses at school or at work, you, know, you should be ashamed and you should you know, confess your sins to the Lord. I mean, when people see young people cuss, man, that, you know, one thing that I really don't like is, you know, those bad words coming out of people's mouth. You know, even before I got saved, I mean, what do you have to use those bad words? But nowadays, I don't know about older generation, but younger generation, every other word is F word. I mean, can you believe it? Like, every other word is like, I don't want to have conversation with you. I don't want to listen to you, right? I mean, why should I listen to those bad language coming out of your mouth all the time? That's a, just a bad example. That's an unbalanced Christian, right? You're not, your tongue is not bringing glory to God. Instead, you know, bringing sin and shame. And as adults, especially parents, you have to watch your mouth. Those kids are looking at you. And a lot of times, kids will say what they hear from their parents. They're your reflection. If you say a bad word, eventually, they're going to pick it up and they're going to start saying it. And I'll be like, okay. People will be like, okay. We know where that kid got their things from. Their parents. If parents fight in front of the kids all the time, what do you think kids going to feel? They'll be like, man, you know, I hate this life. But a lot of times those kids become their parents. They treat others the same way their mom and dad treated others. So instead of having a balanced Christian upbringing, they have unbalanced Christian upbringing. So what happens? They become same. That's why it is very important, whether your parents, whether your teacher, whether your older brother or sister, you have to realize when I do not have, you know, balanced Christian life, what happens? It's going to reflect not only on my life, it's going to reflect on my children and my siblings. That's why a lot of times, kid used to be a bright kid. 
wanted to serve the Lord. Gung ho. Love street preaching, love visitation, love every church ministry. But because of the influences from the, around the person, whether it's parents, whether it's siblings, you could see the person going downhill. Not excited for street preaching, not excited for visitation, not excited for fellowship, not excited for church, not excited for the word of God, not excited for praying, not excited for witnessing, not excited for passing out tracts. Part of the reason, of course, number one is themselves, right? Ultimately, you make the decision. However, as kids grow up, what happens? They have a big influence. They get big influence from their family members. And then you are that bad influence, which make him not live a balanced Christian life. Then you have to kind of think about it. Man, what's wrong with me? You know, how come I'm not living a balanced Christian life? Answer simple, right? Because you do not have Lord as center of your life. Because you don't do everything as if you're doing it for the Lord. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for others. That's why you don't have balanced Christian life. Simple as that. When you're doing everything for the Lord, as if you're doing it for the Lord, think about it. If the Lord were to tell you, go and open the door, man, probably all of you are going to stand up and start running to the door and try to open the door for the Lord because you want to do it for the Lord. However, if someone else tells you, hey, go open the door, Everybody just waiting. Ah, he's going to do it. She's going to do it. Then you answer that for yourself. If someone were to ask you to open the door, who's going to open the door? If you said already in yourself, you know what? Let others do it. I'm not going to do it. Then you're the person who's not doing Colossians 3.23. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. You're just trying it to do it for the man. You know what is like one of the worst sights? Person does their best for people of higher position, but they don't do it for the lower position people. People who think they want, they're higher than them, they do it. Right? Okay, when boss tells him to do it, oh yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. You know, I got a, I got a promotion, I got everything to worry about. But when your family member tells you to do it, you do it. Isn't that the first thing that comes out of your mouth, right? Whether it's your wife, your husband, whether it's your children, your brother and sister. Like, oh yeah, can you throw out the trash? You do it. Can you cook? You do it. Can you open the door? No, you do it. Can you do this? No, you do it. Do you think you'll ever respond like that to the Lord? When the Lord tells you to do the vacuum, Lord, you do it. No, I don't think any of you in this room will be like telling the Lord, like, Lord, you do it. No, you're like, Lord, let me do it. I want to do it for you. But that just shows your, you know, hypocrisy, right? You only do it for your own benefit. You think that if I do something for the Lord, you know, the Lord's going to give me something back. It's going to look good on me. Just like, you know, how you would, you know, flatter, like, you know, some people. Whether it's your boss, whether people position, whether it's, you know, you know someone that you like or whatnot, you're like, oh, yeah, you know. When they tell you to do it, like, you kind of do it, you know, because, you know, you want to be on the good side. However, when someone else tells you to do it, you're like, nah. No, they're not that important to me, right? They're not for my benefit, right? When someone at work is, you know, struggling, and you could be a good example to them by helping them, they're like, nah, I don't want to help them, you know, because there's no benefit to me. Get rid of that mindset where you do everything for your own benefit. You do everything for the Lord. Whether you get benefit out of that or not, it doesn't matter. You do it for the Lord. You come to church on time. Not because, you know, someone tells you to come to church on time. You come to church on time because you want to be in order. Because you want to do your best for the Lord. 
and you want to be there on time to serve the Lord on time, right? You know, why is it that so easy for you to go to a you know, baseball game, concert, meeting someone at a restaurant? You're always there on time. However, when it comes to coming to church and church ministry, you're always late. What does that tell you? It doesn't really benefit you. You don't really think it's important to you. you know, if you were that important to you, you will always make it on time. Why do you think you go to work on time? Because it's important to you. It gives you money. You make a living out of it. However, when it comes to doing things of God, right? When church door opens, you know, plainly it says we start at 10, right? Some of you are like, oh, I want to come at like 10, 15, 10, 20, 10, 30. You know, I'll just come like five minutes late, right? Or, you know, I don't want to face anybody, so I'll just come a little late and just sit in the back quietly, right? Why? Who are you living for? Are you living for yourself? I mean, don't you want to live for the Lord? Why are you so unbalanced? Balanced person will be on time at work, will be on time at school, and especially they will be on time for things of God. There are no excuses. Are you going to give excuse to the Lord? Lord, I'm too tired from everything. So on Sundays, let me just sleep 15 more minutes, Lord. Did Lord do that when he died for you on the cross? Like, did he take his sweet time dying for you? Like, okay, I don't want to die right now, you know? I mean, he died for all of you and me because he loved us and he didn't waste no time. But you waste so much time for the Lord. That's why you have to reflect on yourself, including me. Whenever, I mean, it's not a big thing per se, but it is a big thing. It just shows how important this is for you. When church door opens, when it starts, everyone should be here. If you make a habit of always coming late, then you should ask yourself, what is most important to me? Is Lord important to me? Or is my flesh, is my pleasure important to me? Is my laziness that important to me? I mean, is your laziness more important than Lord Jesus Christ? The days that you don't want to wake up, think about what Lord did for you. The days that you don't want to do anything, think about what Lord had to go through. The days that you don't want to say stuff, the days that you, know, you just want to sit back and do nothing, think about what Lord did for you. Lord went above and beyond as God himself and sacrificed himself for you. When you constantly remind yourself of that, then you're like, man, I've been such a selfish person. I live such a lazy life. I live a, such a pointless life. I was way unbalanced. I put things of the world, things of man, things of myself, more in, I put more weight on that than Lord Jesus Christ. Lord should be always in the middle. He should control everything that's happening in your life. And he should be your focus. That's why, I don't know if you guys have been doing it. I mean, I talked about it probably like last couple weeks. When you wake up, you pray to the Lord that you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit that day. Did you do that today? If you haven't, you're already living an unbalanced life. You have a chance to live a balanced Christian life, when you wake up in the morning, first thing you do is get on your knees and ask the Lord that I want to live a Holy Spirit-filled life today. I want my life to be controlled by Holy Ghost, not my flesh. Then you have a good start. You know, when, when you start off with the you know, unbalanced weight, it takes time to balance it. Then imagine... If you didn't even pray in the morning, you didn't ask to live a spirit-filled life, what's going to happen? Rest of the day, you're just going to waste a lot of time trying to balance it. But when you start with the balance, it's easier. You could keep it balanced. That's why you think about, man, as a Christian, have I lived a balanced Christian life? If not, then you have to examine yourself. You have to get right with the Lord. 
Confess your sins of all your laziness, selfishness, and pride, and get right with the Lord, and do everything heartily as unto the Lord and not unto man. Whether it's you're helping a little kid, whether it's helping your parents, whether it's you're helping your wife, husband, or witnessing to lost souls out there, you know, helping the ministry, you do it as if you're doing it to the Lord and not unto man. Let's pray. Dear and Father, we live our life, such unbalanced Christian life, Lord. We let the things of the world and things of man and our own flesh control our weight, Lord God. I pray that we'll get right with you, reflect on our sins, confess our sins of our laziness, selfishness, pride. I pray that we'll get right with you and live a balanced Christian life by putting you as our control of our life, Lord God. You live within us, but many days we just neglect you, Lord God. Help us get right, Lord, and help us to live a balanced Christian life so that whatever we do, we're doing it to you, Lord God, instead of unto man. I pray that you will continue to be with Pastor Shrive and those who have physical ailments. Lord, please heal them completely as soon as possible. Continue to protect us from this pandemic and crazy world out there. And I pray that we'll keep good testimony for you, Lord, and bless the rest of the day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>